Hello, everybody. We are live, and I'm very excited to welcome a good friend of mine, uh, Andy Zane from Kajora Capital, to talk with us tonight about how to generate consistent returns in emerging markets in Asia. Uh, we're already at 30 people, and they're streaming in really fast. So I usually take the first couple minutes to do uh, a little bit of chit chat and announcements while everyone gets in so they get the meat of the content. Um, to start, let me introduce myself, then I'll briefly introduce Andy and we'll jump right in. I'm Adeo Ressi, CEO of VC Lab. We are a venture capital accelerator and we're trying to lower the barriers of entry to the venture capital asset class, allowing more new managers to come into the, the field of venture capital, launch more firms, and also new investors, new limited partners to enter the uh, venture capital asset class. And it's needed because Andy opened the doors in Asia, but before people like Andy were there, there wasn't a lot of venture capital in Asia. And candidly, there needs to be a lot more even with Andy there. So hopefully we can inspire some of you to launch funds. And VC Lab is here to help. We're recruiting right now for cohort five. We've launched 83 funds that have invested over nearly 200 deals. Each fund has an average of uh, 16, just over $16 million in their first fund. And, you know, they're trying to change the world. Andy, my guest tonight, is the founder of Kajora Capital. Before that, he was a very successful entrepreneur in the region. Kajora Capital is, you know, one of the largest firms in the region. I think it is it the largest firm in Southeast Asia now, Andy? Oh, one of one of the big one, yes. Yes. And so <laughs> I don't say the largest, but of the big one. Yeah, you know, it's always always difficult to use superlatives. And uh, uh, roughly 400 AU, million AUM? Is that 600 correct? by now, yes. Uh, the latest number they put is 600. Wow, 600. Now, are you counting just AUM as the, the money that you're managing? Or are you including markups in the portfolio in that? Uh, the markup on the portfolios, yes, that's how, how we, we put it. Either way, that's amazing, right? That yes. is that is an amazing account because I remember when it was like zero. <laughs> yes. So it's come a long way. Um, yeah. And, you know, through this whole process, you've done, done some amazing things. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So while we still wait for some more people to stream in, it, briefly introduce yourself and then I'll begin with the questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adil. Really grateful to be here. So uh, we've been a long-term friend and uh, I, I've been in the... Uh, uh, the Founder Institute family since I think 2010, right? one of the earlier bets. I've been a director ever since and still doing it until now. Uh, but my day job actually is in, in Kajora Capital. So I founded Kajora uh, eight years ago. By the way, our anniversary is going to be end of this month, 31st of October, will be eight years old. Uh, we start as a small fund uh, uh, like of, of only $2 million. Uh, imagine eight years ago, two million dollars, and we grow. Now we have our, we have, we are on our fifth fund already, uh, and about to announce a sixth one uh, in coming weeks. Uh, so very interesting. Kajora, we invest from really uh, early stage, as early as uh, we used to do venture builder, but not anymore. We do early stage investment, pre-series A, all the way to uh, growth stage, and now we are also going for pre-IPO. Um, yeah, uh, doing very well. Kajora now asset under management is about, uh, I think, over $600 million at the moment. Uh, we, uh, we are quite fortunate. Uh, uh, we are very focused in doing our investment. Uh, imagine seven years experience, seven years fund uh, activities, uh, I think four funds uh, that fully deployed. We only make 38 portfolio, so very little because we are very focused. But out of this 38 portfolio, uh, four are unicorns. Yeah, so more than 10% are unicorns. Then 60% of the money that we deployed are now in company worth uh, over $100 million each. Uh, then uh, last year, the past two years, we were recognized as, as the top performing fund in Asia Pacific. We are ranked number one in Asia Pacific, uh, over 90% IRR. So, so I, think, I think this is a combination of focus, uh, really hands-on, uh, and, and, and being in the right place at the right time. And that's actually uh, bring us here. So really grateful. Anything I can share with everybody here on the audience, uh, uh, let's do that. Uh, okay, so I have questions for you, but I want to let anyone out there ask questions for Andy. 
there's a button on the bottom of your screen. It looks like a hand. It says Q&A. Um, in the Q&A, you can post your questions and then you can upvote them. And later in the conversation, any you know rational question, keep them short. We will get them on screen for Andy to answer. So click the Q&A button, type your question. If you like someone else's question, make sure to upvote it. Okay. So... Maybe we start at the beginning, right? Because I have so, I mean, what a great intro. What a great story. So eight years ago, you had $2 million. Now you have over $600 million in assets under management. That's just like, that's the story that everyone here wants to hear. But let's go before the $2 million. Why? Why did you jump into venture capital? Why did you launch that first $2 million fund? Yeah, I know. We know each other even before I become a fan. No, I know. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> then, then actually, I have to say that I'm a reluctant VC. Even until now, I'm I'm having difficulties to say, oh, I'm a venture capital because I was uh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and still an entrepreneur. So I like building companies. Uh, uh, in the early days, what I did is that I built company, then then uh, they're doing well, then I sold it off and started another one. Uh, then then when after, after three four years it's doing very well, I sell it again and do another one. And that causing a bit of friction uh, in the family. So my wife says that, hey, why keep on building company and you sell it and we restart again with the startup mode, right? There's always time, right? Uh, so, so uh, but, but this is a drive for, for me. It's like, hey, you have to keep on making things, building things. Uh, then, 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 then come to a point like, say, all right, let me also help other people to, to build their company. I start by visiting Silicon Valley, whereas I met you as well. Then I helped few Silicon Valley companies to, to came into Southeast Asia uh, to launch their product and be successful. Some of them doing very well. Uh, they, they was bought over, they were acquired, and now they become some of the top companies in, in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, then I met my partners, uh, my partner Sebastian, and he told me, he said, hey, Andy, uh, all this time you've been helping other people to build their company and enter the market. Why don't you build your own company? I say, yeah, but you need money to do that. Uh, then, 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 then he say, oh, let's raise some money. That's why we raised our first $2 million. The first $2 million, then we, we actually started as a venture builder. Again, not a VC. Reluctantly call ourselves as a VC. We say uh, the first company, I say, is, uh, our firm is called Kajora Ventures. So we're still doing ventures. Uh, uh, we put a bit of money, find good founders. Let's build the company together. It done very well. So the $2 million increased to be $7 million because uh, more uh, friends, I don't say LP yet, friends believe on us and put more money. We have $7 million to play around and building few businesses. I think we built like 10 companies then. Uh, but then we found it's an issue, right? Uh, uh, again, uh, I, I know that the audience, most of you are from, uh, I saw some, some Asian name, most of you maybe from, from Asia, uh, but for audience in, in, in North America or other part of the world, Southeast Asia, Imagine like eight years, nine years ago, it is still very early. Uh, internet company are not there yet, right? So, so people are still uh, 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 learning about the industry. Uh, then that's what we see is that when you are really in the early, early batch, uh, you should not do something too niche. You need to do something like really, uh, I would say, infrastructure level of the digital economy. Right? Okay, so what is digital economy? The e-commerce is very big. Uh, how to enable e-commerce. Of course, you open e-commerce store, but uh, uh, beside that, you also need to do, do to make sure that the payment is there, the logistic is there, all other infrastructure, right? In US, it's very easy. You open an online store, payment is handled, delivery is handled. Yeah, so this is, yeah, there's nothing at all. Uh, so we say, maybe there's a chance for us to build the digital infrastructure to make it happen. That's where we focus. And when we focus on that, uh, the company actually need more uh, hands-on because they don't understand the industry yet. Anybody who become entrepreneur that time is the first time entrepreneur, no experience yet. Uh, so that's why we say that maybe we don't do mass spray and pray models, but we really do focus one. We found good company, uh, we, we found good founders, let's work with them together. If we need to tweak the idea or change the, the whole company totally, we do that. Right? And it's easier for us to do it because myself and my partners, we are entrepreneurs. Uh, we are we 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 learn through our experience also through FI methodology, right? Adio, <laughs> you are one of my mentors. So yeah. so we Thank we you. work on that and 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 really uh, uh, we we actually when we put the investment in the portfolio, we move them into our office and work with us side by side for a few months, like six to nine months. 
until they are settled, then they can run by itself. Uh, so that's how we started uh, as a venture builder. But then we start seeing is that fundraising also takes a lot of time, uh, very inefficient uh, for the founders. When you fundraise, sometimes like four to five months, you are being forced away from your product uh, just to deal with the VC, right? Uh, so we say, maybe if you can give them bigger money upfront, uh, a pre-committed uh, money, uh, uh, then they can focus more in building their company. So our models later on is that we give them, uh, we found pre-series A money uh, company, pre-series A company, but give them post-series A money. Right? So if they're raising a million dollar or, or two million dollar, I say, I'm going to give you $3 million because I think that's what you need uh, to build this business. But I want you to move to my office. We're going to work together and I'm going to give you the money in trenches. You know, when you give them more money, it's higher risk. But you manage the risk by, by working much closer with them. Yeah, and that formula works very well. Uh, uh, our success rate is like now over 70%, close to 80%. The amount of money that we lost uh, in the investment is only 5% from total uh, uh, amount that deployed. Yeah, only 5%. Uh, over, like I mentioned, over 60% of the, the money that we, that we deployed is now in company worth over $100 million. Uh, and and, and we, are, we are fortunate. I think uh, it's a, you have to really look into the timing. Uh, when you are on the early stage, uh, early phase of the industry, uh, you have to be very focused, uh, put money where you understand uh, the industry and work, work very hard to, to take care of it. Uh, then it grows. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's how we see. We don't see that this model will work all the time, uh, but it definitely works uh, when you are in the infancy level of the of an industry, uh, so that's what we do. Uh, that's what or, or an infancy level of a market. Of the market, correct, correct. Yes, and when I say market, it's like uh, it's different. Sometimes, like oh, e-commerce already mature in Southeast Asia, but maybe edutech not yet. So to be successful in that area, you need to do these models. Yeah, or, or once edutech is done, now we talk about renewables, sustainability. That's another area, right? You have to come in. So I believe. Uh, when you're in Southeast Asia uh, and the industry are still very new, uh, your, your knowledge, your experience, your know-how actually counts more than the money. Right? Anybody can come in with the money, as, uh, especially Southeast Asia. There's so much money coming in, uh, but, but you need to see how are you different with the, all the others. Uh, so your experience, your network, being hands-on, being in the market, helping the founders, I think those, those count a lot. So that's, that's, that is how Kajora uh, been doing it all these years. I don't even know where to begin. That's just for me. <laughs> you know, congratulations, right? This is just amazing. I am in awe and, and thankful to hear the story. So let me pick apart some questions. And again, upvote questions in the chat. So are there some companies you haven't moved into the office or is that almost like the MO? They always come in your office. Uh, so <laughs> uh, that's the initially, that's how we do it. At one, of, one point of time, I have like four story building. Uh, no, I think I have uh, in, in an office building and we took four floors, right? Uh, and they're all in different, different, different towers. Uh, then, then there's about 800 people working. Uh, I think close to 20 startups that we're looking after. So I have to like run from one floor to another and talking to them. Uh, end up is too troublesome, right? <laughs> it's too troublesome. Uh, so, so now then, then we outsource it to a co-working, then the co-working actually look after that. Uh, but we still like that models. Uh, at the moment, we don't do that anymore because the funds become bigger. So you can invest in the bigger companies. Uh, initially, we invest in a small team as, as little as three people. Uh, and we, we commit already. Uh, I think one point of time we commit in a team of like, I think less than 10 people, we commit $3 million with them, uh, but in trenches. Okay, here's $3 million commitment, but I'll, put, I'll give you half a million now. Uh, tomorrow, move into my office. We grew them to like, I think 70 people team that they move out. Uh, but now because we have bigger money, so we can be, we can also afford bigger companies. Someone with like, they have uh, full teams already. Uh, then we can move them to our office uh, we have to go to the office, ah. but the spirit are still similar. So you want to help as much as possible. So, so I want to go, yeah, I want to talk a little bit now and I want to talk a little bit then, but I, one of the other things you said is um, about 
if the industry or the industry is not or the country is not that developed, you're going to have to do it yourself. You brought up e-commerce. Are there and you brought up edutech and a few others. Are, if you were to say right now, because this is an partially Asia focused talk, what industries and, you know, maybe without getting too competitive or, or what areas would you say there's still a lot of greenfield opportunity? Oh, almost everything, Adil. So that's why we are really in an in, uh, exciting time. Uh, if you use uh, the, 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 the GDP as a benchmark, our GDP in Southeast Asia at the moment is similar with the, with the GDP uh, of China when China emerged, right? which is like 10 or 15 years ago. That's when the, the big company like Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba uh, was born. So we are now at the time, we are on the golden era of that. It's the, it's the prime time. Uh, so we don't have to go too far to see what is needed. Just look into China. What are the unicorns there? And those are the ones that might work here. Uh, in Southeast Asia now, maybe I have to say e-commerce is, is a bit mature, right? If you want to go for e-commerce, uh, you can still go uh, to service uh, around the e-commerce, uh, service right. that complement the e-commerce, like the logistic still a bit, uh, it, is, it is quite much, uh, saturated already, but still a bit, the technology to allow e-commerce to, to work well, I think it's still there. Uh, Edutech, there are some key players, but I don't think they dominate yet. They There's only no have- Udemy. Who's yeah. going public, by the way? <laughs> yes, yes, is is uh, is uh, FI portfolio, right? Congratulations! Yeah. So I mean, I mean, uh, there's, uh, you know, we can't have Udemy on Southeast Asia as well. Southeast Asia startup need to build something and maybe later acquired by Udemy, right? Uh, so <laughs> uh, then 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 uh, start to fix the education system because Southeast Asia education system are still a lot of them are below par. Right. Uh, if you can do something to fix that, there are players, but there's maybe one or two, uh, and they they have not taken like majority of the market yet. You can still come in healthcare, especially with COVID. There's more money going to healthcare now, right? All government budget, foreign aids coming to this region. Then then it is the time for us to transform the whole uh, uh, health industry. So who are going to do that? It is the founders, and 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 to do that, that you need the money to support them, uh, and and not just money, money, but I mean, smart money, sweat money, people who can come in and help them to work it out. Remember, the keyword is that most of them are first-time founders uh, or they have experience but building other business, not tech business. So when you have this know-how on building tech business, that's the time for you to really get your hands dirty and help them. Not just money, but really uh, your time, your network, your know-how and help them. So, wow, okay, experience matters as much as money. I wanna go back to those early days. Um, do, well, well, maybe I'll ask sort of a generic question. I see questions are streaming in, so we'll get to your questions in a moment. Again, in the chat, upvote. So, you know, now then, do, do you still, do you romanticize the early days? Do you, are you happy the early days are gone? Do you like it now? bit with the more money, you know, I'd love to hear sort of a now versus then comparison. And then I have questions about both, but. Uh, I, I love this question, Adio, because I, this is exactly what happened to me. You know me, like I like building companies and I'm obsessed with helping founders. Uh, then we become PC out of necessity because we want to build more business, we want to create more impact. And to do that, you need money. Uh, then we become PC because of that. Uh, then the VC also doing very well and we raised more money, bigger rounds than now I'm looking after the growth fund. Uh, but it is very different when you become much bigger, look after the growth fund, there's a different skill set and there's, there's a different landscape as well. You met with companies which are bigger, uh, like thousands of employees already and you ask them, hey, do you need help? They say, no, we are fine. <laughs> no, we are fine. We are okay. And actually it breaks our heart, right? So now we are here, we are ready to help you. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so that is the issue. Uh, but what we see is that that's why now we change to a model. It needs to be uh, end-to-end. So Kajora, we aim to become, uh, 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 we call it like, like really full life cycle uh, uh, investment firms. So we want to help company from zero to IPO uh, when they're just starting, yeah, uh, when they're growing and, and all the way to, to IPO. Look at Southeast Asia now. Uh, if you know, there's one company uh, called uh, C Limited, uh, which is listed in New York Stock Exchange. They run one of the largest e-commerce in Southeast Asia called Shopee. Uh, they are listed in New York Stock Exchange, I think, three years ago 
uh, uh, at like three billion valuation. Now it's like 170, 180 billion valuation in New York Stock Exchange. Mm-hmm. And those companies are based in Southeast Asia, right? Uh, and, and more will come, I think, uh, coming years next year, I think two or three more IPO uh, from Southeast Asia will happen. So there's a lot of excitement in this market now. People start looking into that area. So we don't want to miss out this opportunity. And since we know uh, uh, our strength in this industry, uh, what we're looking into now uh, on this situation, uh, what is needed is that how we can consolidate different company and make them a very strong assets. So that's what we, we, uh, we, we, we put our effort in one area. But in another side also, we believe that since the industry are still very new, the market still very new, uh, new unicorn are still being born as we speak. And yeah. we don't want to miss that opportunity as well, right? Uh, so that's why like, uh, our fund need to be across the life cycle. Uh, we are also keep on launching new early stage fund. We have one early stage fund in Indonesia. We are about to launch one in Malaysia. We're going to make the announcement very soon and also a few more in this region. So uh, uh, that early stage fund will point out the best founders in each market. Then our good fund can help them to, uh, to, to, to expand and even grow regional. Uh, then we help them to consolidate and maybe uh, uh, let them for 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 IPO or, 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 or you know uh, getting exit uh, through through whatever means necessary. So that's why I think that's part of us being an entrepreneur. Uh, so when we run the VC, also we use our entrepreneurial mindset. What is required in the market at that time? Uh, and, and find the resource to make it happen because that's what entrepreneurship uh, did, right? Uh, you 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 find whatever necessary resource required to make things happen. So one of it is money. Secondly, can be your know-how. Thirdly, can be the network. Uh, or, or we have to like invest in complementing business around it to make it much stronger business. Uh, then when you get trust uh, from the LP, from the market, uh, then it's easier for you to do it. So trust is very important, especially when you're in this industry. And remember, you are change agent. Uh, you're not just investor. Yeah? As a venture capital, you're not just investor. I put money and get return. But there's a bigger uh, calling. Uh, you are creating big impact, not just in a company, but in the whole industry. And you can make it because you are venture capital. So really take this responsibility. Uh, uh, don't take it like lightheartedly, but, but really this is a burden, uh, but excited because we can do that. So... You just said something that, and I want to be sensitive because I know questions are coming in, but that that I want to dig into a little bit, which is, you know, if it isn't there, you got to make it happen. And I've seen you in your own accelerator and, and venture builder, you created a little marketing agency and, and got, did whatever is necessary because you're like, they need marketing. No one knows how to market. I'm going to build my own marketing agency. What are some of the other sort of not because so far it's been like you you've written a non-traditional playbook to create from two to six hundred million plus in AUM, right? Yep. So what are some of the like things that you think people would find surprising that you did to help a portfolio company or has set of portfolio companies or even an industry? Uh, I think one is that you need to do it for the right reason. Yeah. Uh, when you do it for the wrong reason, the wrong reason is money. Uh, okay, I need to deliver return. Uh, okay, it's fine. But with that is that you are, the whole mindset is about how not to fail, how to deliver the 3x MOIC that, that you are asking uh, if you think about return. But now it's not. You're thinking about impact, how to make it bigger, how to make it bigger, right? Then, then you, you put whatever resource uh, needed to make it happen. Then you get like 10x, you get like 20x return uh, because you're thinking that way. Uh, you, don't, you don't look for safe bet. Uh, you look for the one that really happens. So, so yeah, that's what we do. That's why we say that we don't go for 100 portfolio. We go only 38 uh, in seven years. Each year, we only do four to six company. Out of four to six company, we really hands on in two or three of them uh, because those are the, those are the only... Uh, given resource that you have, uh, you can only safely helping like two or three companies at the same time. You can help 10 companies at the same time because uh, the story say, ah, we are hands-on, but we hands-on in 20 companies this year. Uh, it'll never happen, right? Two, three, four companies still doable. So I think uh, yeah, you need to do it for the right reason and you need to have the right resource, uh, know-how to, support, uh, to, to do it. And, and, and 
again, very important is because we're doing this to change the industry, to impact the industry. You know you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, uh, your own effort won't, won't, won't be enough. Uh, even with money also won't be enough. So the network of people around you is very important. Uh, that's why I'm really grateful to be in this FI family uh, with all the mentors and we all work together. So, so like really value your network, people around you, uh, take good care of your reputation, uh, 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 be ready to, to offer helping hand to anyone. Uh, yeah, it is a long-term game and, and, and yeah, you have to be there. Ah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm beaming ear to ear the whole time you're talking. So I have more questions. I'm going to get to some of the questions here. Okay, so Alex is asking, you know, an obvious good question. Where did the first LPs come from? And I sort of know this story, so I'm going to add a twist to it, like for your first and second funds. And it uh, must be challenging for first-time funds to raise. Uh, what would be your advice? Okay, so... Uh... I'll tell you our, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, our struggle story, right? The first fund is not that difficult because you have nothing to prove. You, you can sell all promises to everybody. Then they say, yes, here's the money. Uh, let's talk again in two, three years. I want to see how is the result, right? So raising the first money won't be very difficult as long as you got good reputation and you got good network, right? So if you don't have good reputation, don't have network, then forget about being a VC. It's not like, I want to be a VC uh, today, then next week you go fundraising. You need to start being a VC like maybe a few years before, right? You need to start uh, pay your dues in the, in, the, in the industry, in the ecosystem. So when you say, now I want to build a fund, would you trust me with your money? So you got like a few hundred thousand dollars here and there, then you got a few million, you start it. So Kajora started that way because we pay our dues. Uh, then our early investors are friends. Uh, so they put the money uh, for us to do it. Uh, that, that's easy. Uh, then our second fund, those are challenging story. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know whether I tell you they or not. But because the first one doing very well, and you know, we are always a very, what do you call it, uh, enthusiastic person, right? Uh, especially with my, one of my partners also, Sebastian, he's like really enthusiastic. He's like, wow, we're doing very well with this, you know, from two, we go to seven. Let's go to 500 million it's because the region need this. Oh, those are dumb mistakes that we have. Uh, and we, we, we talk to many people say, yeah, no, the region need, need, need this much money. Then let's raise that much money. Uh, but you need to be realistic. From seven, you want to go to a few hundred. It's crazy. Then we slowly scale it down to 150, uh, to 300, 150. And I would say, let's do a $50 million fund. It's not bad. From seven goes to 30 uh, to 50 million. Uh, it's not bad. But still, it is very challenging. Because when you move away from uh, raising money from friends to institutional or even to family office, they start look into your track record, the numbers. Right. Okay. Uh, I know you. It's good. You built these five company and they're growing very well. The industry is very good. But you are there only for two years. Yeah. I want to see your track record. What is uh, what happened with your uh, your previous fund? Yeah. I said we don't have any previous fund. Only one. <laughs> right. And and that's very challenging. You met them and things are very encouraging. Say, oh, we like your story. Everything is good. However, you know we are big uh, institutional. Our minimum ticket size is like thirty million dollars. Uh, and and we we maximum we uh, we have to be only thirty percent out of the total fund size. Oh, so many we have to do hundred million dollar fund. We say fine, we're gonna do hundred million dollar fund. But then they cannot invest, yeah, because not they don't want to, but because your situation. So be very uh, 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 realistic about it. Uh, so to expand more, I think to get more people to uh, to to get larger fund. Either you take your time slowly one by one, uh, let's say from 7 million goes to maybe 20 million first, uh, then work your way out. But it is too slow. The region is moving too fast, right? Kajora in seven years, we launched five funds now coming to the six funds already. Uh, we don't do it that way. You have to also work with partners. So get a partners. Uh, they have their own track records already. Uh, work together with them. Uh, their, their track record can help you to raise more money. So I think those are the, the things that you have to also consider. And the more funds you have, the easier it is to raise more funds. So it's a yes. self-fulfilling yes. prophecy. Correct. Correct. I love this question from Akif. It's uh, if you were starting your first fund today, what size would you target? And and any you know thoughts for the others in the audience about 
beginning again. So what size? Okay, so so this is it. If you ask me, right, uh, to to uh, this is what I see. If you want to do something, then you want to hands on and help the company. Uh, understanding that you only get two percent management fee, right? Two uh, percent is not a lot. For you say, oh, there's a lot of money. Uh, but when you want to really build a strong team and and can afford that team, uh, the fund size I would say. 50 million is a good numbers. Anything below 50 million, your 2%, you need to compromise, right? You take lower salary, you have a smaller team, uh, you work, uh, work much harder. Uh, then, 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 but the next one, I'll say 20 million. If you are first timer, uh, 20 million is a good number. It's an ideal number. You can't go for 50. Yeah, 50 is, is good. Uh, you, 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 you straight away, you get nice office, you get more people to help you through that. Yeah, uh, 20 million is a compromise number. Yeah, if you want to do big things. Yeah, but if you really first time, first time uh, and have no experience at all, you have to settle with 10. Yeah, so, so again, uh, I can't answer it directly for you because I don't know your background. Yeah, but I would say go for 10 million if you are first time and you have some experience on the industry, but you're a bit more established, aim for 20 million. Uh, but if you really, let's say you're from other VC firm, you've done good jobs already, uh, and you know that you have big plan, then 50 will allow you to, uh, to have the flexibility. Yeah, other than that, it's hard. I know when I have 7 million, how much we pay ourselves is very little. Then our second fund, then we can start affording a uh, nice office, nice stuff. I have assistant by then. Uh, then we go for 100 million and even more. Then that's where we have more uh, luxury. We can, we can even do marketing, do events. Before, it's like everything is you. Ah, oh, I know. <laughs> All right. Caselli is asking a great question as well. Thank, thanks for the great questions, guys. Remember to ask him and upvote them. So uh, in the beginning, he congratulates you. Your introduction said you were in the right place at the right time. Do you think geography played a critical role in Kajora's success? And then if yes, uh, what would your suggestion be for other people starting funds, like move to Thailand or like, you know? <laughs> uh, I think Southeast Asia is still, is still uh, uh, a market that, that it's not, not saturated yet. Look at the unicorns. Most of the unicorns came from Indonesia, Singapore, uh, maybe a bit from Malaysia. And, and um, I think Thailand, uh, Philippines only have few unicorns, maybe like less than a handful. All right, right. So, so there's still opportunity uh, to build things there. Uh, so uh, I think, I think like Philippines are still underdeveloped. I, I, I just, just struck my mind. You don't have like a travel portal in Philippines, right? Uh, wow, South East Indonesia, you have Traveloka right? uh, and few other markets, they have their own. Uh, but Philippines, there's a lot of things you can do there. So uh, if you ask me, uh, yeah, if the region actually helped Kajora, yes. Uh, but it is not because of the region, it's because like you are in the region, you are consistent in the region, you built your node network, your know-how in this region. Then, then we are on the right time, on the right place because the region need it. So we are there. But you can say now I move from my country to Southeast Asia and try to build something. You need to be very careful because do you have enough uh, that, that, that you can offer to the market, right? You can say, oh, I'm, I'm from Europe. I got all this know-how already on how to build company there. You bring it here. But then you need to have a local partners that help you to really understand what happened in, in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in Southeast Asia. So I remember, uh, I think one event together with you, Adio, also, uh, 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 we talk about uh, there's many startup founders, they say, I want to come to Silicon Valley. Uh, want to learn everything in Silicon Valley because uh, Silicon Valley is like, it's the, it's the, it's, it's, it's ground zero. Everything happened here, right? Uh, I want to learn to race together with all the Formula One racer. And the Formula One racer are in Silicon Valley. I kind of like a bit disagree with that. I say, fine, you learn how to how to how to ride a Formula One car. But when you're back in Southeast Asia, it's very different. Uh, this is the track. <laughs> it is you don't have like the smooth roads. It is the track. Yeah. So so then you 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 know how to ride Formula One car is will not be relevant here. But so what I want to do is that 
the the the, the interesting thing we bring them to Southeast Asia, work with local. So bring your uh, okay, operational excellence, your discipline, and execution with the local wisdom, local knowledge. That's where you have good result. You can like pull out the tree out of the roots, move it there, and build uh, build something in in other market or, or learn from other market, and then put it back in Southeast Asia, and hopefully it grow. It will die. But you bring people in who have know how and train them. So if you're from the other market, Caselli, let's say you're from Europe or North America, come in, but but you open up your mind, uh, uh, ready to absorb and learn before you give back. Yeah. If you start coming wow. in and say, oh, this is how we do it. Oh, then people will hate you because you don't know what you're talking about. Right? But you come in the first six months, learn everything, absorb everything. Then there's a time that there's a lot of things that you can contribute. There's another good question, but I'm just going to add, you make your own luck as well, right? Yes, so, yes. All right. Xavier's asking, as someone who's launched fund one to five, uh, which one did you find most challenging to raise for and what were some challenges at each stage? This, this is also a good question because everyone's yes. different, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the second one, actually, <laughs> the first one is easy because you have nothing to prove. You just tell people it, uh, on that and they trust you on that, on face value. The second one cannot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you try to go for a bigger one and you don't have enough yet. Uh, then the third one is much easier because you have track record. Uh, so when you launch the next one, it's much faster. It's, it's much, much faster. It's like uh, six months and we launched a new funds already. We do three meetings and they give you $20 million already. Uh, previously, no, you have to meet them months, uh, get to know them first, uh, but it's getting easier. Yeah, but you need to really keep on consistent uh, results. That's awesome. Right. So, but to some extent, you've had such an easy transition because the 38 companies and the performance of the funds has been so yes. strong. Yes. Um, uh, it, okay, this is an interesting one, right? So uh, Yinka is asking, your fund one, the $2 million one, is it still active? What is the average return from the fund? And of course, I told Annie when he came out, don't answer anything you're uncomfortable with. <laughs> so, I think, well, yeah, yeah. I, but you can generally also ask her, like, what do, what do you set your, your fund duration yes. as? Do you have extensions? Yes. I'd love any. Yeah. yeah. So, so the first one is not $2 million. It, it's $2 million is the one, the first money that we try. Yeah, right. uh, we try. It is more like a closed loop. It's like only few, uh, few friends that put in the money. Uh, we don't construct it like a GPLP model. It's doing quite well. But what I can say is that all our funds are performing above average, above market average. Uh, so we're very really grateful with that. Uh, I can point out like the second one actually is like 96% RR, uh, the highest in, 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 the, in the regions. Uh, and the rest are, are, are pretty, pretty much, I think, uh, overall, uh, I have to I have mentioned that 5% failure rate. Uh, the ninety six percent IRR. If you, you for those of you who don't know, it's like kind of nutty. Like if you get thirty percent IRR, you're like, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So, so so just just very very interesting. It's like one of our companies that we invest. Uh, we invest at a uh, forty below forty million. Oh, it's a forty million post money. Yeah. Uh, we got it. Uh, and this company now uh, maybe few billion valuation. They're unicorn, and next year we're gonna go for IPO. Uh, with few billion valuation, mm -hmm. we are in in control of about thirty percent of that. Wow, that's right. amazing. So, 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 so back to fund duration because in the region it's it's still early, as you said, and not all the companies are going. Do you set it for ten years with extensions? How long are your funds lasting? Yeah, uh, we do four plus four like normal, uh, but typically uh, the four investment period plus four additional uh, for for exit. Uh, so, but the four investment period, usually we, we use out the money within one half to two years because the deployment is fast. Uh, we don't, we don't look for many companies. We only look for maybe 10 companies, 15 company, uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, per funds. Right. So yeah, we deploy very fast, but then we use the remaining time to really help them groom them. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's how we do that. Uh, we, You're we, doing it fast. Holy crap. Yeah. So, so, okay. Yeah. Can we talk about, so let's, let's, let me tangent on that for a second and pop any other questions and we should get through a few more and vote them up. So that's fast four and four, right? That's, that's, do you have any extensions? 
Uh, not yet. Uh, again, we are just eight years old. Kejora only eight years old, right? So our fund is uh, uh, the, the the last one that we we have is so eight years old. It's not like from the time we launch the fund when we start operating. Only after two years, then we start our our, our first fund. Uh, then yeah, uh, yeah, our first fund is just like six years. We have two more years uh, to exit, and we are doing some exit now. Uh, I don't think we will extend. I think we will yeah we will give return to our investor. On that 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 uh, uh, that fund, how, how I mean, I'm speechless, which doesn't happen very often. So, in Silicon Valley, like the heart of the Formula One racer, that's not on, on not on the dirt road. You know, we're looking at eight, ten, twelve plus years from pre-seed to some sort of exit, and yeah. you're looking at eight. What, is it Asia? What? Where is the? Where do you think that sort of super hyper growth magic? Why is that happening? So things are happening much faster in in Southeast Asia. Uh, it used to Literally. be. Really? Yeah. When you build a company, I, I have a chart on that. Later, I'll, I might sh uh, share it. It's like uh, it used to be to build a unicorn takes you like ten years before it reaches unicorn status. Uh, lately, companies in like two years, three years, with unicorn status already. So things accelerate very fast. Because why? The market is ready. Consumer is ready. So you don't need to like, oh, take them three, four years to educate them. Uh, mm -hmm. Then they start uh, adopting. Then you start growing your company. No, it's like consumer are ready. Uh, in, in, imagine, uh, Adil, Southeast Asia, uh, over 600 million populations, uh, 350 millions already with mobile phone and with broadband connection. This is more than the amount of mobile broadband user in America, in the United States. So the market is ready. Yeah. So and they're so, looking at the US, they see the US with this stuff. So are, are so so look, okay, this begs another question that you know, and, and I know that there's a lot of copycat models in Asia that were originally developed in the US. And, and, and maybe we're leaving that period. Is it still like a largely copycat world or do you feel there's really, have you seen some like unique to Asia, big opportunities emerging? Yeah, uh, so we need to look into, uh, into, into the market. The market situations are very different. Yeah, I'll, I'll use Indonesia as a contrast. Indonesia, we are a country, uh, 280 million population. We have 70 million SME. And most of these SME are still traditional. They still use paper and pen right, to, to take notes and everything. So those are huge opportunity. Uh, then, then we have e-commerce. The e-commerce of Indonesia, maybe 4%, if being optimistic, 5% uh, uh, of people actually uh, shop online. Uh, so 95% are still doing, uh, the retail are still on the store, in the shops. Mm -hmm. This 5% will grow maybe to 20%. But 80% will still remain that like people buy in the store. So those are big markets, right? So when you're in Southeast Asia, you need to understand this. If you really work only on the on the e-commerce, there's maybe potential 20% or 30% of the total market uh, market size that you will cover. But if you open up your, your, your horizon, look at the whole pictures, there's other things which maybe in US don't have it. Yeah, because US don't 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 uh, don't look into this. Uh, 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 people buy online on everything, but in Southeast Asia, you still have people in the villages to do the economy there. So you start thinking that what can I build to help them? So that back for a, a specialized solution, and you only know it when you are here in Southeast Asia, right? Uh, but but the execution always a challenge because again. Mostly people here are first-time entrepreneurs. They never done it before. They never built anything for scale yet. Yeah, the most they've done is like building a website which maybe a few thousand people will, will, will access, but not for tens of millions of people. Uh, that's where we can learn a lot from North America, from the other markets, yeah, because you build something for scale. But the market, the segmentation, uh, what kind of product, you really need to be on the ground to really know what happens. And there's so much stuff you can work on. Just talk about commerce itself. And you, you can play with the 20% or play with the whole 100% or additional 80%, which are the solution you don't find it anywhere else. Maybe it's, 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 it's Southeast Asia specific. Uh, I just talk about e-commerce. Talk about healthcare. Again, it's Oh my God. Right? <laughs> I, have, I met with Isaac and he's yes. like, 
I need Dak. And he's trying to 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 make the uh, Indonesian healthcare system yeah. modernized overnight right. because of COVID. And yes. the guy is working across the country and he needs like every single thing you can imagine. EMR. <laughs> All right. Like, Everything, right? right. Yeah, digitalize the health data. There's so much stuff you can do. But again, you're going to encounter problem which you never seen in another part of the world. You need to be here to know it. So that's why you need to be here. That's why move into Southeast Asia, learn your lesson first, take the first six months, talk to anyone, uh, live the local life. Don't come to Singapore. Singapore don't represent Southeast Asia. You have to come to Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and uh, go to like the second tier city. That's where all the opportunity. I love that. Uh, lots of questions. I like this one from Kiseli. Um, if what is uh, Kajora's capital investment thesis? Like, you know, if you could express it in a sentence or two or longer. <laughs> so, so we have multiple funds uh, and all have their own thesis, right? Uh, yeah, and, and their own segment. Uh, but we're always about synergy, hands on. So those are our, our we call it red line, whatever you do. We only invest in one area, which we think we understand, and we invest in the other company, which we think can give synergy. So our, our model is always like, you know, uh, like you are a big armada. So you have the big super carrier, yeah, but then you have small other ships around it, like the fry grade, the bomber, everything, right? Uh, so when, when you want the big guns, then the super carrier will be the one that actually go. However, the super carrier are slower. You want to do a big turn, a U-turn, it takes you maybe like a like, like few days because you can do a complete turn. But the smaller boats can do it very fast. But by being together in one armada, then you have power, right? The big one can help the smaller one and the small one can be very agile and do whatever the big one cannot do. So there is always our thesis. So focus on what we're doing. Uh, then by doing that, it's very easy. When you launch a new business, that new business straight away uh, will get support from the other, the older brother or, or sister who can support. Okay, let me help you with this. Uh, let me learn some of our people and let me connect you to this market. You can come in straight away. Then your risk in opening up a second, uh, a second business become lower. Right, so so that's what I do. I think I think if you can model it, let's model it, uh, the Marvel uh, movie. So yeah. they do multiple movies, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then each movie we build on top of the other movie, so they get audience to watch it already. Then the risk of the movie flop is much slow, uh, lower. Then you have to do like individual movie, uh, all with different themes. So I think these are the models because things are still moving. Uh, it's a new industry. It's a new universe. Then you can build. So you shape it. So that, that, that is more like our thesis. We believe on synergy. We believe on hands-on. We believe on uh, like, like you need to connect to one to another uh, because it's, it's a new market. Risk is very high. Yeah, uh, you, you don't understand the customer yet and, and to make it work, to, to lower the risk, then do it together. Okay, so that was beautiful, by the way. And I just got to say, if, if I have ever heard someone say a thesis that was just awesome and easy to understand, that was it. But I'm going to ask a question about it. So that sounds great, right? And, and it is. I had, I had goosebumps. Like, how? how? Like, because you got the super carrier and they're, they're, you know, they're busy with running the super carrier. And like, how do you get a super carrier to help or someone else? Or how do you get one company are you the go-between? Do you encourage them to talk? Do you have some like uh, book yeah. face or something like that yeah. that you use? What's your what's your method? I think because we are unique to do that. I don't think it can be replicated with the others. When you are new in the industry and you focus, that's what you get. Uh, so the drawback is that we don't have a hundred portfolio. We can't claim that. Oh, out of like twenty unicorn in in the region, we invest in half of them. Uh, I only have four, right? Uh, not, not as many as other, other VC. I don't say, oh, I have 10. Uh, however, they only own maybe like small stake in each of the company, maybe half percent, one percent, if you're lucky, five percent. Uh, for us, is that when we come in, we come in with quite big stake already because like what I earlier uh, shared. 
we come in when they're young, we give them more money, we give them not just money, but also uh, our time, our sweat, work together with them, that, that allow us to own bigger equity uh, from beginning. Then on the next round, we also participate. So we maintain our stake in the company uh, and we work very closely with them. Imagine, I only need to look after 38 companies. Out of 38 companies, maybe 20 that we are very close. And these 20, four of them become unicorn and, and, and the remaining of them like 100 million valuation. So, so we sit on the board on most of these companies. That's why when, when we build a new company, we say, hey, by the way, would you like to, can you help this company? Can you mentor them? Can you show them the rope? Then those are easier. I don't say that anyone can do it. When you have a few hundred portfolio, then you barely meet them. They say, hey, by the way, this is it. Can you help them? They say, well, yeah, uh, I'll meet you maybe next year during uh, the, the investor meeting. But, but yeah, I don't know you. Uh, so again, it is unique in Kajora. Uh, I, I don't see if anyone in the region can do something similar, uh, but, but we are quite comfortable on what we're doing. Of course, we miss out many opportunities. Sometimes I look at this company, ah, I wish we invest there, but, but we cannot <laughs> because we have limitation. We are too busy in our, uh, the things that are in our hand already. So you're, you're doing, <clears throat> you mentioned this, you're doing follow-ons, right? Uh, so you're, do you, is there any case do you, where you don't follow on or is your intention to try and follow on? And then if you can't follow on, do you offer the follow on to your LPs? How, how do you manage yes. the Yes, so we follow on, but but again, it is a different different fund, and different fund have their own investment committee and should not be interviewed one to another, right? So, so you have when we pull, quote unquote Chinese walls between Chinese wall between all these funds, we need to yeah. really have, have a, a strict compliance on that. So when we follow on on the new fund, is that uh, the new IC need to approve that, and someone else actually lead the valuation. Uh, so someone else lead the valuation, then we follow. Uh, so that's the situation. Uh, then, then, yeah, uh, so far it's doing very well. If, if there's a potential conflict, then we go to the advisory committee. Uh, then they will, they, will, they will settle that and say, okay, fine, we understand. Uh, it is indeed a good company. Let's go for that. That's awesome. So you're, you got, you're, you're unpacking some fun. To, I'm writing, we're announcing a major legal document tomorrow, hopefully in TechCrunch. So uh, I've been writing about all these terms today and how we handle them in our agreements. Okay, um, there's so so many good questions. Uh, what is your view on investing in deep tech and biotech in Southeast Asia? Uh, Rady is asking. Okay, I, I don't say it is bad, but we don't look into that. The same thing when people ask me, Andy, do you invest in, 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 in crypto? Uh, yeah, I invest, I lost money, but individually, because I don't know how. So you only invest in things that you understand and, and suitable in the market. Uh, so uh, deep tech is interesting, but I believe that uh, Southeast Asia might not be the place because all the talent on deep tech are not here. Mm -hmm. right? uh, it's maybe in US, in China, in, in, in Europe, where, where uh, the market are more developed, education systems are much better, uh, the research funded by university or government are uh, more there so so uh it is a good place for us to 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 uh to build something on on, on that market but southeast asia it is not yeah and uh it is more like uh, in southeast asia it's like race to the new world you know like like columbus uh found america or, or, or let's say yeah found america then they bring all the uh all the all the immigrants there i i remember there's one movie from tom cruise far and away right so uh, you go to in the horse they give you a flag then you're gonna you're gonna race to the land that you want and you put your flag there Tup, this is my land right uh, the land rust so South Asia is like that so it is a land rust so what you do is that try to get the best land possible the best segment possible and what are those segments those segments are the the the, the big verticals right uh, the healthcare the education the e-commerce the fintech anything to do with SME because there's so much of them. So try to pan your flag there and, and, and build a, 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 a tall fence. So no, this is my area and start building. Yeah, guarantee it will work. If you execute it well, it will work. If you have enough funding to support it until uh, you finish your building, it will be worthy, right? So, so I think that's what you do. Uh, should you do deep tech? Yes, but maybe later. Should you do consumer tech? Yes, but later. 
right? Uh, you can still do a lot of stuff like building, building the roads, building the toll gate, uh, uh, create the, the building, the property, instead of like uh, opening small specialty store or some beauty, uh, really build the infrastructure level uh, 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 solutions. So the yeah, tech is you, like the you, Formula and One racer brought into the dirt road, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So okay, so you build the roads, right? Because it's still a dirt road. But once the road is yours, people will pay tall to use your road. That's what you have to do now. I, 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 there's so many good questions, but we don't have more time. We'll do one more. I'm like, I'm just interested in your views on this because we we don't talk as much as we should. I will. Let's do a catch up offline. But um, I love this. Is a question from uh, Sharon. With SPAC being an investment trend these days, and you know we can argue how trendy it is, what is your thoughts on this type of structure for uh, Southeast Asia companies? I'd, I'd love to hear because I have some thoughts about that too. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Ariel, I got distracted. Uh, what is the question again? Uh, what, what is your thoughts on SPACs for Southeast <laughs> Asia? <laughs> uh, uh, this pro and cons, right? Uh, uh, it can be faster to help you. So you get a blank check, you can do whatever you want. It depends on, 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 on who is doing it. Uh, have you been, have you been offered to do SPACs? Yes. <laughs> we offered yeah, in two I, I know. <laughs> yeah. In two have, you, I, have, you, have you done one yet? Uh, so not, uh, we, we, we turned down uh, the, the two offer, but one of our portfolio actually is taking a, a SPAC deal. Uh, and bring them to uh, IPO for next day, next year. So, so our portfolio, one of them actually take it. But, but we got offer a few times. But we, uh, no, it, uh, we we it's just a matter of uh, you know we are entrepreneurs. We like to build company, and, and so far we're still busy on doing whatever we're doing. And and uh, yeah, once you there, that you commit to one thing, you have to be you know you might be distracted from other things that you're working on. So. Yeah, not yet. I don't say no, it's just not yet. Yeah, they've kind of fallen out of favor here in the United States. Yes. Like uh, I had a yes. yeah, that's what I say. If you're a later what? on there'll be a lot of things that you have to answer because why you use that format or whatever instead of focusing on building uh, the business. Uh, so maybe not yet. <laughs> well, listen, Andy, like usual, ah. Oh, this was amazing. I, I think this is actually one of our best webinars that in terms of the stuff, I know it's good when I learn a lot. So thank you so much. You you shared such great knowledge here. I'm going to make sure this record, are you okay if we share the recording? Because I'm sure a lot no of worry. people want it. No worry, no worry. Yeah. And also I put it on the chat group, my contact, if anybody want to reach out to me, that's my email and my IG. Yeah. Feel free to reach out. Happy to help. Thank you so much, Andy. You have a lovely morning. Thank you. Thank you, Adio. Thank you, everybody.